Okay, today we're going to talk about um, chiral carbons and molecules and racemic mixtures and enantiomers. So earlier we talked about how optical activity is present in some molecules and it turns out that molecules that possess chiral carbons um, possess optical activity. Now what's a chiral carbon? Well let's look at a molecule here. Let me just draw one of these out. Um, this one has three carbons in it. All of the carbons in this molecule are tetrahedral, um, but only one of them is chiral. Our definition of a chiral carbon is a carbon that is tetrahedral that has four different substituents um, bound to it. So while we look at this molecule, we can see there's one carbon, two carbon, three carbon, it's only this carbon that is deemed as chiral because it has four different substituents attached to it. It has an OH, hydrogen, chlorine, and then this ethyl group. All four of those things are different from each other, and so this has interesting three-dimensional geometry, and that can interact with plane polarized light in an interesting way. This carbon is not chiral. Again, it has two hydrogens attached to it. Those hydrogens are the same thing, so it's not chiral. And this one is definitely not chiral because it's a CH3 group. Three of the four things attached to it are the same, so it's not uh, chiral. Now, when we start thinking about the stereochemistry of molecules that have chiral carbons, we need to think about them in three-dimensional uh, space. And so there's different ways to do that. If we have our piece of paper, we can imagine this chiral carbon is tetrahedral, and we can describe that tetrahedral nature with a series of wedges and dashes. If you remember, wedges are coming out of the board at you, and dashes are coming in the board at you. And so we've defined the tetrahedral nature of this chiral carbon with this OH group coming out at us, the chlorine going away from us. Okay. We can also visualize the three-dimensional nature of these chiral carbons <clears throat> or any tetrahedral carbon by using our, our iSpartan program. So if we look at this molecule in three dimensions, we can rotate it and we can see that these all carbons in this molecule are tetrahedral in geometry, but this is the only chiral carbon right there because it has four different things attached to it. Now let me try to convince you um, how this molecule's chiral carbon really defines uh, a type of stereochemistry where there's different versions of it. So what I'm going to do is move this molecule to the side and I'm going to try to build one uh, that's very similar to this one but fundamentally different, not an identical molecule. And so what I'll do is uh, try to add, let's, let's get you back on the board here, let's just add a chiral carbon right here, right, and then we'll try to make it similar, right, here's our ethyl group up at the top, right, we'll have hydrogen this position, um, but what I'm going to do here is now switch the positions of the alcohol group and the chlorine group. Okay, so now if we look at these two molecules, uh, let me try to be able to rotate one of these sort of specifically. I'm going to try to line these up as best I can so they look as sort of similar as possible. That's pretty good. Okay. We can see that these molecules are very similar to each other, right? And in fact, the, the carbons that are not chiral are pretty much identical to each other if we look at them in three-dimensional space. But it's this chiral carbon which is special. It's very different. And what we see is that it has the same substituents bound to it. It has an ethyl group, chlorine, hydrogen, and an alcohol group, an OH. But in three-dimensional shape, these are, are different from each other, right? Um, here I've lined up the chlorines so that they're in the same relative position in space, 
but the alcohol and the hydrogen are opposite of each other. And there's really no way that I can rotate one molecule so that it matches exactly and is superimposable with the other one. Right? I can try to let me get this hide or this alcohol group pointing out at us. Right? But that's a problem. Now the alcohol group's pointing out just like this one, but now the chlorine's where the hydrogen should be. The hydrogen's where the chlorine should be. There's no way to uh, rotate this molecule so it's identical to the other one. And this is indicative of molecules with chiral carbons in them. These molecules are actually mirror images of each other. One's a right-handed version, the other's a left-handed version, and just like your two hands, there's no way to rotate one versus the other so that they are superimposable to each other. They don't match. And uh, one of these would rotate light in a clockwise direction and the other one in a counterclockwise direction. We can't just look at them right now and tell which way it would rotate light, but they would be able to rotate light in opposite and equal manners. Okay, um, And the presence of this chiral carbon is what gives these molecules the interesting um, nature that allows them to have non-superimposable mirror images and this stereochemistry that's interesting. So let's do a little bit of work to try to figure out if we can identify chiral carbons. Here's a list of molecules that we have and let's try to find some chiral carbons um, in these molecules. See if they have them, if they don't, how many they have. So let's look at this molecule here on A and there's a lot of carbons in there. This is CH3, CH3, CH. These two obviously are not chiral because they have CH3s, three H's on them. This one you might think might be chiral. It's got a CH. It's got this interesting thing, but it has two methyl groups, and those methyl groups are the same, so this isn't chiral anymore. Um, this one is chiral. This carbon is uh, the only chiral carbon in this molecule. It has a bromine, methyl, hydrogen, and then really this, what is this, isopropyl group attached to it. That's the chiral carbon in that molecule. Okay, here, CH3, nope, CH2, nope, CH, yes, this guy's chiral. Got a methyl, which is different from an ethyl, which is different from a hydrogen, which is different from this CH2OH group. Okay, this is not a chiral carbon, neither is that. They have too many hydrogens on them. This oxygen, we don't really talk about too much about chiral atoms other than carbon, so we're going to focus on carbon here. Anyway, this oxygen wouldn't be chiral anyway because it has two identical lone pairs. Here's a carbon here, CH2. Um, it has two H's, so no way that's chiral. Here's one. It's got, you know, a CH group associated with it. That H is different from the CH2, which is different from what's on this side, but that's still not chiral. Remember, one of our definitions for a chiral carbon is it has to be tetrahedral. The hybridization of that carbon is trigonal planar, so that's no good. However, if we were to look that's a good chiral carbon. That's a good chiral carbon. These two aren't. And you should go through the rest of these molecules in this video by yourself, right? There are some chiral carbons and some are not. Here's an interesting example. This carbon right here. Is this chiral or not? Well, it's got a hydrogen, which is different from the isopropyl, but then the rest of it's attached to this ring. And so really, when you look at these two similar sides, if it's not symmetrical, then the two sides are different. You know, if I'm imagining I'm on this carbon and I go over here, I can go to a carbon and then an oxygen. That's different than if I went to carbon and then only other carbons. So we would say that this carbon is a chiral carbon because these two sides of the ring are asymmetrical. They're not the same. Okay. Uh, you can look at E, F, G, and H on your own. Actually, stop the video right now if you want to try them on your own or pause it. I'll circle some chiral carbons here um, in just a second so you can check your work.
This one actually has none, right? This is not a carbocarbon because one side of the string is the same as the other. That's symmetrical. Here we don't have many tetrahedral carbons. This is really the only tetrahedral carbon in the molecule, and it's got CH3, so no chiral carbons here. We would predict it not to be optically active. And in H, well, we've got this one and this one are chiral. They have four different things associated with them. And as far as the rings go, you know, this ring is different than that one. So it's not symmetrical around that hydrogen.